Good morning. Good morning. Look, it's the, see, 2022. I'm going to talk about the calendar today. And then I'm going to talk about another thing that I found. <laughs> okay, so here, here's what I have to do um, before I can uh, talk about this fabulous calendar. Um, I have to turn on the other screen. You know how this works? See, the screen is on over there. Yeah, the screen is over <laughs> screen is over the, there and um, it's kind of up and to the side and because uh, I, I can't yet I'm not I have not reached a place where I can figure out how to do this and see this on this screen and at the same time read <laughs> oh dear it's a wonder that anybody untrusts um, done it and nothing happened oh wait there we go and I've turned off her volume okay so now <laughs> good morning Garen how are you it's, you're so early this is wonderful absolutely wonderful okay now I'm frozen I appear to be frozen frozen in time all right we're back good morning um, today, welcome, welcome. Today is episode 55 uh, in the continuing saga of, um, of Abby Haggard, um, Viking at Large. And um, I, I want to begin uh, not by talking about the Care Bears calendar for 2022, although I'm going to go on and on about it in a minute. I want to begin by saying this extraordinary thing is happening. And I'm not sure why, and it's wonderful, and I can't thank you enough. Um, so I, I record this uh, live. Obviously, here I am live. I record this live on my on my regular Facebook page, but I have I have other Facebook pages, and the it's I guess it's a, supposed to be called the business page. It's Abby Haggard Fame, and um, and so then I I I share it there. And that page links me to my Instagram, and so I share it there. And then I go to um, LinkedIn, and I share it there. And then I go to Twitter, and I share it there. And then I put it on my YouTube channel, uh, which now has 75, 75 subscribers, which is so exciting. That's three more than when I asked the last time for help in telling people, so thank you. So it, here's, here's the interesting thing. Um, since... The last week of May, all of a sudden, the numbers of people I'm reaching on Abby Haggard fame with these videos has shot through the roof. And I don't know what happened. And I'm delighted. I'm not questioning it or quibbling in any way. Uh, however it has happened, it, it, I was getting sort of 80, 80 or something, which is lovely. And all of a sudden, I mean, today, when I looked, just to be sure, it's 323. How I don't even understand. And this is just for the last video, last Thursday. So I, I am, um, I'm, I'm delighted and I'm thrilled, and um, kind of you know feeling all cool about it. The thing is, it's doing what it's supposed to do. If I'm consistent and I'm you know bringing to the table. On a on a predictable basis, on a regular basis, something that you can you can lean into and count on. Things that are interesting, things that make you smile, things that make you say, "Oh, gee, that sucks," or whatever, whatever they do, if they engage you in some way, if you feel a connection to me in. just magical that's that is the way friendships are made that is the way it's supposed to be and really all we have to do is keep doing it right if it's working ain't nothing to fix so so I wanted to begin by saying thank you and I wanted to begin also by saying 
we we can't let up you know the, the whole reason that vikings did so well is <laughs> we were and are relentless so if you are enjoying these videos um it is a huge help to me it is a huge benefit to anyone who might be wanting to hear this kind of stuff needing to hear this kind of stuff stuff wondering whatever happened to mom or or um, the care bears or any of the stuff that i did or or people who are enjoying my facebook posts i have quite a few people who comment from time to time if they aren't aware that there are videos uh, because it's passed them by i mean i've only done 54 of them and this is now 55. It, it's easy it's easy for people to miss so it's it's a big help to me you're my army you know if you say are you are you watching abby's stuff it's it's really good oh yeah i've been meaning to do that yeah well get off your thing and watch it um so it it requires all of us it takes many many vikings in the boat to row from here to there and sitting there and saying look at the view uh, doesn't cut it because the boat that i am in is not a is not a cruise ship it's a working boat and we only get there because we want to. And the more hands, many hands make light work. So I am beyond grateful. And now I'm asking for more because that would be the way Vikings are, really. So anyway, that's my pitch. Please comment as as. comment on on what they're all about so that's the first thing the second thing is um, these calendars so is that the right way yes so this this is for 2022 can you see it clear it's it's hard sometimes oh look look at that abby bring it in for a close-up <laughs> see 2022 the image that they've used to to make it perfectly clear is that this is the original image of the original bears created in 1982. This is the old school. These are, and three of them are mine. Um, how do I do this? That's friend bear. And over there, that's wish bear. And down here with the two hearts, that's love a lot bear. And those are my bears. And so what is gorgeous about this and it's unfortunately it's 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 because it's so beautiful and soft and lovely it's it's also really hard to get clear because this is all watercolor these are original watercolors and i'm, I'm just going to find one well see this is this is beautiful so i'm going to do this i'm going to bring it right in close so that you can i hope you can see it can you see it the artwork is just stunning and so therefore it's a um, it's a memento it's a keepsake and even if you no longer use the calendar for whichever month for 2022 you have the artwork so if you're a real care bears fan if you if you really love them if you really grew up on them if, if it was really you know at that time in your life or your little brother or sister or or a cousin or somebody a friend just uh, you don't identify with a bear, really, usually. But you you resonate, you identify with the love. You identify with the sweetness, you identify with the inclusion, you identify with the non-judgment, you identify with the the, the 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 size of their bravery and the size of their intrepidness had nothing to do with their physical size which is the way it is with how we feel and believe about people. The fact that we might be five foot nothing or seven foot something has nothing to do with how much we care. So I'm gonna have these lovely, lovely calendars with me in August at Fanaticon 3, August 14th Sunday. And, and fairly soon, I'm gonna figure out how people post the things that they have for sale on Facebook. 
I'm, I'm going to navigate my way through how you can just order something from me on Facebook. So I'll have I'll have the coloring books. Um, I'll have the uh, I'll have the calendars. I'll have the uh, anniversary 40th anniversary mom. You can't do that on television hats, and um, and I'll come up with a few other things and. Uh, and that way we can start having this conversation about, oh my God, I'd love to be able to get that directly from you. Um, I'll have my books and I'll have the pivotry and motion stuff and we'll get a little thing going on, right? So I'm, that's, that's a plan I have kind of on the sidelines. So anyway, calendars, stunning, gorgeous. And, and by the way, heavy, like really good quality. Um, and, um, and each one of them comes with this little uh, gubbins um, that allows you to hang it um, on the on the wall, and um, so that's very special. I just love it when I find a really beautiful, beautiful piece of art, and I know that I can, you know, get it get it for people who really care, who really love what it's all about. So that was that. The other thing before Garen asks, I had this incredible. Revelation yesterday. <laughs> Ta-da! And, um, and here's what it was. Um, so I'm working on the Pivotry in Motion book. And for those of you who are new uh, to, the, um, to the show, new to what I'm doing, um, Garen, I'm going to put the light down. I, look, I feel silly. <laughs> for those of you who are new to all of this, aren't quite sure what you've stumbled on, vaguely remember me from something. I'm Abby Haggard, and um, I was uh, very busy for a few years on some television projects uh, back in the 80s, actually, oh my goodness. And you can't do it on television, was and still is the world's most popular, original, irreverent kids' TV show ever. And I played the mom and the librarian and a few other crazy characters. And our goal was to annoy parents and give kids a place where they said, finally, somebody taking us seriously. And that's why it was and still is the most popular kids TV show ever. You can find it on YouTube. All you have to do is Google You Can't Do It On Television. And if you want to see how incredibly silly I was, you can Google You Can't Do It On Television mom <laughs> no we're not on any networks um in in our entirety i i think paramount plus is running the first half season or something um so until any of that status changes you can find us on youtube um at the same time that we were doing you can't do that i was doing morning drive radio i was recording um documentaries and training films um because i have I have one of those voices, you know, that sound comforting and intelligent and knowledgeable and wise. Um, uh, <laughs> we're not still sure how that how that worked. Um, so I did a lot of that, but I also did the Care Bears and Teddy Ruxpin and uh, For Better For Worse and boy, a bunch a bunch more. So it was a busy time in Ottawa, and when that chapter came to an end, as all chapters do. Um, I, I transitioned into other areas of entertainment. And the reason that I've kind of led with this is that, um, <laughs> good morning, Jeremy. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, when, when the chapters... Uh, recording you get on television, when that show came to an end finally, when the Care Bears moved on from Ottawa where we had done the movies that won international awards and went off to other towns and other people began doing the voices. I stayed in Ottawa. Um, I didn't stay in Ottawa because I had no options. I actually went looking to see if there were other places I wanted to be. I'd already lived in, in the States, I'd already lived in Florida, and I'd already lived in New York City. I'd already worked in publishing and fashion and tourism. So I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. 
um, I did go to Los Angeles. I, I had a wonderful opportunity to, <laughs> uh, good morning, Steve, um, to meet some people really, really in the top echelon of the casting and uh, talent management um, through a friend of mine who was in radio in Ottawa. And I went and sat down with them, and they said, you know, the grass is always greener someplace else. And what you need to do is you need to decide who you want to be before you can ask anyone to help you with that. And so many people, you know, they, they get the feeling that um, if I just show up and I stand there, then somebody wiser than I am will come along and say, and you're going to be, bing, and there you are. And that isn't how it works. We actually have to bring to the table the elements that we want. And this wonderful, wonderful guy, he was with CAA, which is huge um, talent representation agency. Um, it's different in Canada. You get to do a lot of work, um, pretty much anything you want. And I said, well, that's how we, <laughs> that's how we <laughs> keep from starving to death. And he said, yeah, you have a smaller audience. The thing is that, that here in the United States, if you sign on with an, an organization that's going to manage you, we're managing you. And we're going to tell you where to go, when to go there, what you'll wear, and who you'll go there with. And it will continue like that until you have a name big enough that you can branch out. And even then, and even then, your management team will decide what's going to happen. Ultimately, you'll sign contracts and you'll decide yes or no. But if you want to work, you'll, you'll let us run things. And, you know, that, I, I, I found myself really kind of like this. And I said, that's so, feels wrong. And he said, mm-hmm. But that's the, way the, that's the way the industry is in a place where it's a buyer's market. When it's a buyer's market, the seller is not the one who makes the decisions and calls the shots. So you need to know that. And he said, um, which of the things would you happily give up that you're doing now? He said, I've seen your stuff. I know what you do. I've read all about you. I've seen your IMDb. What would you give up? And I said, well, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to give up anything. And he said, well, that's going to be the first decision. The second decision is you need to understand exactly how hard it is to get as far as you've come. Where you are is huge compared to 90% of the people trying. 90% of the people trying are, are doing something else for a living and going to auditions. That's it. And, and look what you're doing. Look, look how far you've come. Look at So you need to make a decision. What is right for you? And then we'll see what we can do. Isn't that interesting? As a kind of thing you, you wanted a you wanted a guidance counselor in, in college to tell you, right? It's it's the kind of thing that you you wanted um, I don't know a, a, a kindly a kindly mentor to tell you, and um, so it, it you know I, it was a, it was a lot to take in, and uh, I was so grateful I was so grateful, and I came home, and um, I had an opportunity to to so I Ottawa is where I fundamentally live and work. I had an opportunity, thanks to a great, great, fabulous uh, colleague, friend, talent, uh, John Stalker, who we, we did Teddy Ruxpin together, and he said, you know, I, I'm very happy to introduce you to my agent in Toronto. You've got a really good voice. So I, I took him up on it. And that agent and the agency said the same thing. You can be in Ottawa, or you can be in Toronto, or you can be in New York, or you can be in Wyoming, but if we need you, you need to be here. So, and you can't be in two places at once. And until you're big enough to call the shots, if you're not here when we need you, that'll be the end. That'll be the end of it. And I said, okay. And for a while, I commuted back and forth. I certainly didn't commute from Ottawa to Hollywood, but I commuted from Ottawa to Toronto for a year. A year. And I found, as, as predicted, <laughs> When I was in Toronto, they needed me in Ottawa, and when I was in Ottawa, they needed me in Toronto. And so, 
It was a crazy, crazy time. I needed And the only way I could know that was by giving it a try. And I think we forget that. And so what I want to talk about today that came up yesterday and was sort of churning around in my head all weekend long was this idea that if you don't like the channel, change it. If you don't like the meal, don't order it again. If it's not working for you, there's nothing wrong with you. It's simply not for you. Life is actually that simple. And sadly, because we're, we have these incredible capabilities in our brains, a lot of the time, we overthink it. A lot of the time we, we get a message and we misunderstand it and we don't know who to ask and get it right. And for a lot of us, we're too embarrassed to ask. Oh, I can't ask that. What will people think? Well, they'll think they don't. Here's, here's what occurred to me. Life. Live. Living. This is this who we are, what we have, what we're doing. Sometimes it's not going well. Let me rephrase that. Sometimes it's not going as well as we had expected or hoped or thought we were promised. And when that happens, we hit a wall because we don't have a set of instructions in the first place. And so we certainly don't have backup instructions for what to do when, right? And and I thought I need to I need to find the words that help me explain that. And I thought, oh I know, I know. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look up the word live or live, depending on how you say it. I'm gonna look up the Latin. And when I saw the word, I don't know how to pronounce it, I didn't study Latin in school. Viver, probably. I looked at it and I said, oh, look at that. So that gives revive. Viver, V-I-V-E-R-E. -E. Revive is R-E-V-I-V. -E -E. Interesting. It gives the word revive a totally new relevance, context, meaning. It's not... He's unconscious, let's revive him, although, sure. It means we can find a way to live again. Live differently. Chart a different path. Recover when there's a flat tire. When the boat springs a leak. When the boat leaks, it doesn't mean, oh well, the journey's over. It means we have to fix the boat. When there's a flat tire, it means we either have to fix the tire or we have to call a mechanic or we have to hitchhike or who knows what, if we want to keep going. If we want to just sit in the car, eventually we're going to have to get out, at the very least, to go and use a bush by the side of the road. So this time in our lives, in which people are really struggling. And, I, and I'm talking about this a lot because I'm talking about our ability to pivot and the art form that we take pivoting to, the level that we raise it to, is incredible. And because we don't know we do it, we can't be proud of ourselves for doing it. Because we're not aware that we use this skill all the time, every day, we can't find ourselves saying, how about that? Because we don't know we do it. And, and my goal with Pivotry in Motion, the book series, and then the series, 
is to give everyone permission to say, huh, look at that. Look what I did there. Well, well, the, those people who are pointing their fingers at me don't know what they're talking about. I, I don't need to listen to them. I got stuff. I'm working it. Jeremy, race car backwards is race car. Yes. <laughs> Live is evil backwards. Live is evil backwards. Well, yes. It is. Thank you, Steve. We need to have an award for random and interesting. Here's what, here's what matters. However you want to play with the words backwards, forwards, sideways. Whatever you want to do to distract yourself from what I'm saying. You go right ahead, but I know what you're doing. <laughs> if we hit a wall, it's terrifying. It's a surprise. Um, if we run headlong into the wall, it's painful. If we are confused by it, if, if, if it makes us lose our stride or forget what we were doing, it's very unsettling. When we realize that we've lost valuable time, it's frustrating. And though Those emotions are not helping. They're not giving us tools to get up, brush ourselves off, put a Band-Aid on it. They're not helping. If they're not helping, they're in the way. So focusing on something that gives us permission not to think, plan, and do more for us because it works is really silly. It's crazy. Why would we do that? Why would we get in our own way? And the answer is fear. The answer is what every animal does when they hear a noise, when something happens they didn't expect. They go to ground, freeze and hide, wait to see if the danger passes. Okay. Meanwhile, we're not animals going to ground, freezing and hiding. We're people and we're smart. And after a couple of minutes, we need to get up, brush ourselves off, get a Band-Aid, and carry on. Otherwise, there'll be nothing cooked for supper. So, I, I have found in my life that a lot of people aren't really listening. And it's not that they're not listening because what you have to say isn't important. If, just teasing, <laughs> no you're not. <laughs> you're tap dancing. So if people aren't listening, there's two reasons. One is they're not engaged. They're not in the moment. They're somewhere else. There's a couple of reasons they're somewhere else. They're somewhere else because the moment scares them. They're somewhere else because they're still stuck in another moment that they're not finished with. Or they're hoping somebody else will do the heavy lifting for them. Really, that's all there is. They're afraid. They're confused. They're previously occupied or they can't be bothered. Pretty much sums it up. If that's what's going on with them, they're not ready for us. They're not ready for us. Whether we've just done the dumbest thing on the planet or the, we're the brightest, brightest bulb in the room, If they're not ready for us, they're not going to get in the boat. They're not going to leave the dock. They're not going to say, yeah, I'm in. 
Which way do I lean? They're not coming because they're still there. And that's a really difficult thing for us to grasp because, you know, we only look at the world through our eyes. Even when we say, I want to try and walk a mile in their shoes, we're still trying to walk a mile in their shoes through our eyes. We can't, we can't get rid of this, right? I used to say, you know what's wrong with this picture? I'm in it. <laughs> I would be in the middle of something awful. Why am I still here? I can leave any time I like. What am I doing? And, and I always, as, as soon as I possibly can, I always try to use humor to give myself that distance I need to see the thing for whatever it is, for what it's worth. I always try to give myself the tool to step far enough back and humor Humor, my lovelies, is, is, as far as I'm concerned, our greatest gift, our greatest blessing. If we can find a reason to say about people who are normally scaring us or hurting us or getting in our way, they don't, they don't own our power. We own our power. And that's, that's really what this is all about. Pivotry in Motion is the name of the collection, the book series. Here's how I came to it. If you get a word like um, wine, there's a word. <laughs> if you get a word like wine and you add the letters R-Y to the end of the word, you get winery. And a winery is the place where wine is made. It's still wine, but it now has another definition that's bigger. It has the place it happens, right? If you decide to go to school and study to be a chemist, what you do for a living, you either study or you work with the various compounds and figure out what happens when you mix this with that. Whoa, or ah, that's a chemist. The study that you pursue is called chemistry. Oh, it is the place where the chemist learns or works. Isn't that cool? Forest, that's a place where trees grow. Forestry, that's a place where people manage the health and well-being of the forest. Makes sense. And you've heard of all these words. And you've used them interchangeably, forever. A poet is someone who writes a lot of visual, imagery-focused words. And they're put together in a very specific number of ways. And when they're put together, in a specific number of ways. It's called poetry, correct? Moving on to pivots and pivotry. A pivot is what happens when we change direction suddenly. When you go up on the ball of your foot and spin around and face the other way. That's a pivot. There's a thing you can buy, it's a pivot, and it's built the same way. There's a central point that things spin on. You can, you can change direction mentally. You can pivot emotionally. You can pivot your beliefs. You can pivot in any number of ways. And when you do it, and how you do it, and why you do it, is pivotry. And the reason I've called it pivotry in motion is because we are not static creatures standing still. We are constantly in motion. Our lives are in motion. We are constantly moving from one place to the next, learning one thing after another, choosing to take action or reaction. Even if we're spectating, even if we're static, standing still, 
we still have to pivot if what we're looking at moves. We can stay looking forward and wait for the next thing to come along, or we can pivot to follow the action. So I was playing with these words all weekend, and I said, yes, this makes all the sense in the world. And then I looked at Viver, and I thought, revive. And I thought, okay, this is my talk today. And um, just before I started recording today, if, you, if you're on Facebook watching this, you can, and, and you go to my page, my Abby Haggard page, and you scroll down, right before I started recording, there's a picture of a 48-foot Owens Aruba boat in the water. And the reason I posted it, someone reminded me today in one of my memory things that came up, that I, uh, I made a huge revive, come alive, reset when everything hit a wall for me. And nobody knew about it. The reason I didn't know about it is I wasn't on social media and I didn't talk to anybody. I just kept taking one step after the next. So here's what happened. My mother died. You can't have it on television was canceled. Then it was revived. We did a bunch of fabulous cartoon work and then the shows ended. And it was a window of time in Ottawa, and um, then it was over. And so there weren't a lot of great cartoon jobs popping up, like roses in the garden. It was a quiet time, you know, like the ocean, ebb and flow. It had been really busy for four or five years, and then nothing, crickets. So my mother died, and that was a really emotional uh, setback. It was more than more than difficult. It was distracting because you have to be single focused if you want to succeed. You look at Olympic athletes. They don't really have hobbies, right? You know what they do other than breathing? Practice. That's why, they, that's why they get good enough to win. So they don't have hobbies. They don't say, gee, I'm really bored. Nope. They got one thing and one thing only. If you want success, you have to have that focus. So when you lose someone, and it happens, especially if it happens out of the blue, uh, it, is, it is completely discombobulating. And um, so I, I was doing my best <laughs> to juggle that and work and then the work ended and then more work ended and then more work after that ended and then someone and to this day I don't know why decided to sue me make a big public deal to try and blacklist me not sure why I've you know over the years, I, when it comes up, and it comes up in a conversation, and somebody says, did you ever figure out what that was about? Nope. No, figured out. All I can think of was, at the moment when it happened, their life really sucked. And they took a look at me, and I looked like I was having the best time in the world. And they had this completely irresistible urge to poke me there so that they could feel better to get rid of their whatever it's all i can figure out in any case all of those things happened and um so i not only lost revenue i lost the ability to get more revenue and I lost the ability to stay focused and be creative and come up with innovative new ways to invent opportunities. Good morning, Kevin. Oh, just stopping in before my meeting. <laughs> Beautiful Vicat. 
Vicat, new word, new word. Kevin has given us a new word. Vicat. I'm all over that. Thank you. So, so everything, every single thing I was doing all seemed to come to a complete and final stop against the terminal building at the same time. What? Why? Now what? I was, I was completely gobsmacked. And you know, that only happens to me mm, once a year, maybe. And it hadn't happened to me in a long time, so I guess that was, a, that was the gods making up for it. Everything. Everything. On top of that, the person I'd bought it this, the, the farmhouse with didn't want to own the farmhouse anymore and said, if you can't buy me out, we have to sell. So when I sold, I, I had no money. And it was a bad time to sell. We didn't make a huge profit. And I had to split what that was with the other person. So all of a sudden, it felt like all of a sudden, it took about a year and a half for this all to culminate. But when you're in the middle of it, when you're in the picture, you don't notice the things that are happening around the outside, unless, unless you're paying attention. Unless periodically you say, excuse me, just gonna check the boundaries, make sure there's no poaching. And I didn't do that. I was too busy having a wonderful time. So, from working nine days a week, doing fabulous jobs, all kinds of crazy, wonderful, challenging things and making good money and being on the, on the news, on television every, every week, all the time, being on radio, being that person that people say, oh, there she is. I went from all of that to nothing, crickets. And, um, and then I, I, I kind of stood still for a minute and I thought, well, I can't just keep standing here because it's gonna rain soon, it'll be dark, and there'll be bugs. So I, one of the things I had always done and continued to do for many years, many, many years, is I worked with a local lovely person who created this um, uh, very, very vintage, very charming um, Christmas event in the village where I lived in Manitou. And uh, we had Father Christmas and Merry Christmas in these lovely vintage costumes. and. This, this friend and I, this actor and I, we would do all these lovely things and to get the village, get the kids, get the, get the seniors, get families involved in, in being interactive and experiencing the, the spirit of Christmas, the, the, um, the flavor of village life at Christmas time. It was wonderful. So I reached out to her and I said, I, I, you know what, I'm, I'm out of ideas and I need some ideas. And she said, what's up? And I said, well, you know, wow, boy, when, when things go wrong, <laughs> you, you really know how to put a bow on it, don't you? And I said, I, yeah. And I, there was the other thing. And now, why would somebody be trying to call me now? Hang on a second. Decline. So, I cannot believe that. We're going to ignore them. We're going to ignore them. Decline. 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 This is incredible. Close. Alrighty then. I have no idea what that is. Whoever who tried to call me, I'm doing a video. <laughs> is that bizarre or what? Okay. So I was just saying to you when that call to come in, I was just saying to you unless you pay attention to the stage manager. Garen? Exactly. If 
do you become known for one thing? If you tell the world over and over and over till the end of time that you are a giraffe, <laughs> then they're going to believe it. Even when they meet a real giraffe, they're going to say, there's think you were maybe some sort of hybrid giraffe, the Viking giraffe, the Viket giraffe. The Valkyrie, Valkyrie giraffe. I can't even, I'm not even gonna go there. I can, and I will at a later time. If people have come to understand, accept, enjoy, feel good about their perception of you, it's very difficult to get them to believe that you could be anything else. Why? Because we feel really good about the certain things in our lives. In a sea of uncertainty, we want to hang on the things that we hang on to the things that we believe are completely and entirely and forever true. I'm right, aren't I? You're nodding your head as I'm saying this. So, if you become famous for something, anything, you can be famous for becoming the village idiot. <laughs> it's very difficult to persuade people that you're actually fairly clever because they've come to believe that thing about you. I became, in my small local pond, I became that crazy redhead who's in show business. And oh my God, what are you up to now? That's who I became for all the people who knew me or who recognized me. Oh, you know who that looks like? That Have you seen that woman who? They had a version of me. And you know what? I did it for long enough that it had to be true. It had to be true. I mean, it was, it was almost 20 years before everything changed. So when everything changed, it was... It was so difficult to get people to hear me when I said, there is no work. There is no work. Oh, there can't be. That can't be true. I mean, you're fabulous. Why don't you do another show? There are no shows. Well, produce one. I don't have any money. I have no money because there is no work. And I can't make money because no one will hire me. Well... Got it, we'd love to hire you, Abby, but we, we, you know, we don't do shows. Yeah, I know, and I'm not asking you to hire me to do a show. I'm a qualified executive secretary. I'm a licensed bartender. I can, I am licensed to drive transport trucks. I can, and I would list all the things that I had done before, during, after, around, under, beside, and through while I was in show business. And every single person I spoke to, every single one of them, said, oh, you wouldn't want to do that. Every one of them. And I would say to every one of them, I would get right in their face, and I would say, yes, I would, because I'm starving. Oh, God, Abby. Listen, listen, you know, you always bounce back. You'll, come, you'll find something. fascinating, isn't it? Keep positive. You'll find something. You always do. And I would say, well, that's why I'm talking to you. Want to do this? No, you'll find something. You wouldn't want to do that. Now, they didn't not hire me because they didn't love me. They did not hire me because they didn't believe that I could do a good job. They didn't hire me because it didn't make any sense. They can't, you know, they run a bar. 
they they you know they have a courier service. They can't have Abby Haggard working for them. I mean, that that just doesn't make any sense. So they would delete the idea completely, and they'd say, you know, I, I like can I can I lend you a couple of bucks? No, you can lend me fifty thousand dollars. I need a I need it. And let me come to work and I'll work it off. It was impossible. So I had reached out to this woman who was very innovative and very creative and very problem solving, very, very proactive. And I said, so here's the problem. And I told her. And she said, can you paint? And I said, can I, can I paint? Sure, I painted my farmhouse. She said, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't mean like your mom. <laughs> I didn't mean like your mother. <laughs> my mother. My mother had studied with a group of seven. Not like that. I said, no, no, I can paint. Why? Do you need something painted? And she said, well, I don't need something painted. But I'll tell you what. Um, we have our boat down at the marina. My brother and I actually own the marina. And I'm buying him out. Anyway, one of our one of our boaters, he has a boat. It's a 48 foot Owens Aruba. Do you know what that is? And I said, large. <laughs> 48. Feet. And she said, yeah. She said he he doesn't really have any money, but he needs to. He's got a lot of rot on the boat, and um, he needs to have his boat sanded, and painted. And he can't afford anybody. Um, you know what? It's it's like out of the water, obviously, because it needs to be. Why don't I reach out to him and see if he'd be interested in having you do the work for him? Maybe let you stay on the boat. Really? Awesome. Give him a call. So she did. And then she called me back and she said, okay, come down to the marina. And um, you know what? I can probably find some odd jobs for you. So come down to the marina and uh, let's see what we can do. And I swear to you, I swear to you, that's what happened to me when you can't have it on television and Teddy Ruxpin and the Care Bears and For Better or For Worse and all the stage shows I did. That's what happened to me when I just kind of vanished off the radar. And I had no options and no jobs and there was nowhere I could go. I lived aboard someone's boat and a local marina paid me you know, food money, gas money, to do odd jobs there. And I sanded and painted his boat. Took me most of the summer, 48 feet. You know what's interesting about a 48 foot boat? Each plank is 48 feet. <laughs> like it's not one, it's not one 48 foot thing and then you go around the other side and it's a second 48 foot thing. No, no, no. Each plank. Both sides. Have I ever sanded anything again? No, as a matter of fact. <laughs> kind of done it. Kind of did my full, my full quotient of sanding. So I sanded that boat. I had the stuff and the thing, and then when it was in dry, I stood there with a the sander, then get on a ladder to do the next one. Go around the other side. Somebody, periodically, somebody would come over and tap me on the shoulder, scare the living crap out of me. It's a slap. And I'm, there wasn't a tap. Wah! <laughs> Turn off the sander. It's lunchtime. Okay. And I did that for days and days and days and days, and then days and days and days. And then we painted the boat. We washed it down. When it dried, we painted the boat. And when the paint was dry, we, um, the thing about wooden boats, you can't just put them in the water because they, <laughs> they sink. So a wooden boat, what you do is you put it in the water slowly, 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 and you, you have it in, in the uh, slip. And as the wood swells, as the wood swells, you can gradually let it sit lower and lower in the water, and then there you are. So when the boat was ready, um, we tugged it over, hauled it over to the slip, that this fellow uh, rented, and the boat lived there. And um, I spent the rest of that summer, because he had a house and he had a full-time job, 
I spent the rest of that summer sleeping on a 48-foot Owens Aruba. And I would get up at dawn, make coffee, go and sit on the top deck, watch the fish jump, watch the fishermen out there, buck 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 Sit there, fish behind the boat. Bleh. It was the most beautiful, serene, exhausting, unbelievable gift that someone forward thinking, creative thinking said, you know what? And I used to ask her why she didn't judge me, why she didn't catalog me. And she said, well, you know, I'm British. We, we talk to our plants. So we, we look at all kinds of opportunities as potentially being real. And you're inventive, you're creative, and people like you. So why wouldn't I have you around the marina? You're an asset to me. And by the way, you were pretty good at the odd jobs. I worked in her chandlery and stole and sold stuff. I talked to the boaters. Helped her organize barbecues. I was kind of like her gopher, and I slept on that boat. It was, it was incredible, and it gave me time. It gave me time to segue from what was real to what could be real. It gave me time to revive, to come alive, to reset my expectations and to look at my opportunities brand new. I had always done that. The, the benefit to me is that I had always done that as a military kid. Every opportunity was brand new. It wasn't my choice. It wasn't smart me saying, let's go to a different country where nobody knows me and I can try all over again. It, it, was, it was thrust upon me. So I had practiced it my whole life. I just hadn't realized it. And, and this is where I'm really going with this subject today. No matter who people think you are, you have all the room and all the talent and all the imagination and ability to be a different version of you. Because we already are all these different versions of us. Lots of time to think, concentrate, and plan adventures when you're standing a boat. That's right, Kevin. Gotta go. Kevin has been loading and moving rocks, <laughs> so he knows whereof I speak. So the, the beautiful time set aside when you're standing there sanding is like when you're driving in your car or doing the ironing, or peeling potatoes, or moving rocks. Your cave brain is in charge of those simple, repetitive functions. That's what it's doing. Your creative brain, your stage manager brain, is free to think, to plan, discard, and give your actor brain something to do that's new. It's incredible. So this is what is happening to us these days. Not that. What is happening to us these days is we are exhausted by the things that are broken, hurt and confused and lost and scared and angry and alone and grieving and therefore, pretty much at gunpoint, we would have a really uphill challenge to be single focused on our success, on our next steps. We're done, or at least it feels like we're done. And when people come to us and say, listen, you can get over this. You just have to and then they say the next thing. So the word just is a trigger for me. 
makes me want to poke them in the ear with something awful. I don't know, a weasel, <laughs> a fish, a sandwich, ear. Because it's inconsiderate and it's condescending. Like anybody could do it, what's wrong with you? And that's what it makes us feel like. The fact is, and you know it, it's resonating as I say it, we are many, many versions of ourselves. We are the happy us and the sad us and the goofy us who forgot to put on our pants. And we are the caring us and the confused us and the hungry us and the fell in love with a small, tiny, doozy, woogie, googie animal and talking to our boss and running after the garbage truck us. We are all of those things. And we always can and have and will find room for more versions of us the minute the opportunity presents itself. We do not have to do more to be more, to get more, to fit in. We are not meant to fit in. A team is made up of individuals, distinct. <laughs> That's my friend, <laughs> Liam. <laughs> Liam Gibbs says, we don't go shopping for clones of us at Clone Depot. <laughs> we are one off, one of a kind. And there are so many versions of us, it's like one of those forever mirrors. When someone says you're not doing enough, they're wrong. We are doing everything. And that's the problem. We have permission. We always have had permission to give ourselves time to revive, to re-come alive, to start again, begin again, try something new. What we have to do is give ourselves permission to understand that it's going to take everyone else time to catch up with us. It's not that we're failing. We're awesome. <laughs> Even when we make mistakes, we're still awesome. We have to remember to give other people time to learn and fo to fall in love with this new version of us that they've never seen before. We are always famous to someone. And when we say, do you mind if I bring my ukulele? And they say, you can play the ukulele? No, I just wanted to bring it along. Yes, I can play the ukulele. Wow! How? Wow! You see what happened to them? They got all excited. We didn't scare them. They said, oh my God, there's a lot going on with you. Yes, there is. And that's what this video is about today. There is a lot going on with you. And it's all amazing. And if something isn't working, if something has hit you by surprise, and it scared you and exhausted you and terrified you and frustrated you and confused you, it's perfectly normal. It happens to all of us. When you're feeling those things, that's your cave brain wanting you to freeze and hide. And everybody deserves to do that until the pain stops. And then the most magical thing happens. And this is the biggest blessing we have. Our curiosity wakes up. 
And it says any number of things. What's for supper? Can I change out of these pants? I wonder what's over there. The minute our curiosity wakes up, our cave brain isn't in charge anymore. Our stage manager brain has taken over. And our actor brain is saying, yeah, yeah, let's go sit someplace else. And we win. Pivotry in Motion is a project that has come to life because of you. Because of these conversations with you. It has taken me in an entirely new direction. It hasn't made me shelve anything I'm doing. It has made me recognize that this, this is such a gift because it's about us. It's about us, all of us, together, separately, exponentially. And it's going to be the trigger that makes every next great thing happen. I can feel it in my bones. We can reset, we can revive, we can bring a new version of us alive anytime we're ready, anytime we have the will and the want. That, that is our superpower. Isn't that amazing? So, I have this one funny story to tell you. And it, it has to do with all of this, with me having no place to live and suddenly having a place to live. I was sanding the boat one day, uh, among many days, and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and I shot 40 feet in the air, <laughs> came down, <laughs> shut off the sander, <laughs> took off the headphones, took off the shield, turned around, and there was a, a woman standing there. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> my heart back, back, beating normally. <laughs> yes? And she said, I swear to God. What are you doing? <laughs> it's a grown woman. A grown woman. Owns a car, drives in traffic, votes. Raises children. <laughs> Grown woman. What are you doing? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I'm sanding the boat. And she said, oh, oh, okay. Have a great day. Walked away. what that did for me then. <laughs> it made me laugh <laughs> after I stopped blinking, leaning on the ladder. What the hell? And when I had finished for the day, <laughs> I'd gone to the local bar <laughs> to have somebody buy me a drink and feed me. And somebody said, so how was your day? <laughs> I had that story. And I told it. And every single person sitting in that bar did exactly what I did in the moment. And then, and then the magic. They all had stories to share of people doing that stuff. So an entire room full of people who may or may not have had a great day suddenly had an amazing evening. We were laughing. We were feeling better. Was I still sipping sip and sore? Absolutely, I was still sipping sore. I had to go and have a shower and all that stuff. 
it didn't make all my cares go away. What it did was cement my relationship with my tribe. So sometimes the things that happen that break are supposed to. Sometimes the things that happen that come within mm, of breaking us are supposed to. Not because we deserve it. Not because there's some great cosmic thing saying. No. It's to give us a tool. It's to give us a lesson. It's to give us something to put in our quiver along with our arrows and take it with us and wait for the moment to make it work for us somehow. So I guess that's my, I don't know whether it's my philosophy or it's my, you know, tie a bow on it and make it all nice. None of the things that are happening to us are nice. The cost of things, the, the uncertainty of things, the, the, the things that normally we handle fairly well that we're not handling well at all, these aren't nice. And I'm not certainly going to be one of those annoying people who say, you know, it, it, it makes us stronger. No, it doesn't make us stronger. It makes us more exhausted in the moment. However, if we can remember, if we can remind each other of the Freedom 55 video, because that's what this one is today, we have the freedom and the power to say, I need a break. I broke something and I need time. I deserve time. I'm worthy of time. I'm worthy of self-care. I'm worthy of being considered in a new light. I have permission to begin again. I have the power to start the next chapter. The reason we start new chapters is because previous chapters end. No matter how many times we reread them, they end. And that's perfectly okay. Because not only do we maintain in our memory banks all the versions of us that we have ever been, we maintain, we hang on to, we still love all the magic we've ever seen. It never goes away. And every time we talk about it, every time we share it, we revive it. It lives again. True story. Okay. I hope this was okay for you today. I hope this hit you at the right time, at the right place, in the right way. I hope you'll tell your friends that if they're struggling, this is the video they need to start by watching. Watch this one. What does she know what she's talking about? How could she possibly know? Let her tell you. I only know these things because I've waded into them. <laughs> Dragged my sorry self out the other side and said, well, let's not do that again. <laughs> At least not in those shoes. With them. So, until I see you, and talk to you on Thursday, which is only two days away. And I have something else to share. I want you to do us all a great service and tell people that this is a cool thing to do. Thank you, Steve. You too. I want you to tell people this is a thing to watch. Don't have to watch it live. It's around. It's here. We're building our tribe. We're sneaking up on everything. 
so that everyone has as good a time as we do. So please tell them. Comment when you're done. Like it. Go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Do that for me. Do it for you. Do it for everyone. And after that, be good to you. Remember to hug your loved ones.